and welcome to my first video of 2019 in which there may be some tea sipped. So get your beverage and get comfy. First of all, I hope you guys had a wonderful holiday period and that you are all going in to 2019 with positivity, just making resolutions about things that we want to enjoy and ditching the things that didn't work for us. Before I get into the meaty parts of this video, I also just want to say a quick thank you to everybody who sent well wishes over Christmas. I got horrendously sick, I had a chest infection, it was terrible, and then I tried to slice off my pinky finger. I didn't quite manage it, but I, I, I did a good job. It's really my own fault, because as you can tell from our temporarily temporarily seated place on the floor there's a new colour on the walls because my anxiety over Christmas decided to manifest in a home makeover and I should never be allowed to do DIY alone. It's all I'm, it's all I'm saying. It's all I'm saying. One of my goals for 2019 is to have three book unhauls throughout the year. And um, <laughs> this is my leaning tower of books guys. There are over 100 books here that I have selected off of my shelves to get rid of. I am not usually someone who prefaces my videos by saying this is only my opinion, blah, blah, blah. you know what kind of opinion you are getting when you come to my slightly bitchy unhauls. However, the one thing that I would like to say is that when it comes to unhauling books, I don't think there should ever be any guilt involved. When you bought that book, it gave you happiness to buy that book and it gave you happiness presumably to have it on your shelves when you received that book that you were never going to read from your family member that you felt obligated to keep on your shelves for a year it, it gave you happiness to know that that person was thinking about you but now you're done with it for whatever reason your tastes have changed you just don't like the synopsis anymore loads of people you trust aren't really in favour of it so you don't really want to spend time on it. Whatever reason, even the reason of just because, is a legitimate reason to get rid of books from your shelves. Oh charity bag, oh charity bag, you make me feel so good about myself. The first one that's going is A Stolen Life by JC Dugard. I read this because I made a list of all these books on my TBR that I really really wanted to get to. I'll link that video above if you haven't seen it. And this was the first one that I picked up. It was okay. It was fine. I was very interested to find out what her life had been like living as a captive for 18 years. But JC, to be perfectly honest, by the end of this book I found her voice quite grating. The second one that I have is The Secret Barrister by The Secret Barrister. It's a non-fiction book entirely about what it's like to be a barrister right now in the UK and I read the start of it which was hilariously side-splittingly funny and really really incisive and then I just nut it was boring and dry and I felt like I was clawing my own eyes out reading page after page. The next one that I am getting rid of is Raymond Chandler A Life by Tom Williams. Turns out I really like Raymond Chandler's writing but I'm really really uninterested in the very long and drawn out process that it took for him to get into publishing. Next I've got Today I'm Alice by Alice Jameson. This is a memoir about living with multiple personality disorders and I just didn't get on with it. There was nothing particularly wrong with it but it wasn't compelling me to keep reading so it can go. You guys are going to be like why are you throwing out that book? You love it so much. And I do love it so much or rather I love this story so much. I do not love this edition. I hate the UK editions for these books and the wonderful Kirsty who may live in Australia land may very well have sent me a new copy of this for my Christmas which I'm waiting to come in the post because Australia is very far away. So in the meantime this can go. Oh what a shame. Next I have Adnan's Story by Rabia Chowdhury. This one is probably going to be a little bit controversial but you know that's what we're about apparently these days on this channel. I didn't feel like I needed any more 
of just his story and this is really exactly that. It's his cousin writing a book about what happened during Serial, retelling the entire thing but adding in all of the things that Adnan apparently didn't get the opportunity to see and I just didn't feel like I was getting anything from this book except an anger migraine. Notes on blindness by John, yes, John M. Hull. I'm not doing very well with names today. It scared me in the first sort of chapter and then after that I was like, this again is not telling me anything that I feel like I don't already know. Next I'm getting rid of Magic Lost Trouble Found by Lisa Sheeran. This is an urban fantasy slash fantasy fantasy set in modern days it is weird it's just weird it's really really cheesy and so I just I'm not I'm not gonna continue with it. I am also getting rid of Undead Girl Gang by Lily Anderson because I have a real problem with where the love interest went. I ummed an ad about this one for the longest time because I really like the writing and the premise but I just uh, no no Next I'm getting rid of Finding George Orwell in Burma by Emma Larkin. This was so boring. So, for such a tiny book it was not as long. There's one point in it that I just find inescapably funny when Emma is travelling down a river with one of the Burmese river boatmen who she has hired to take her for a tour and she's like she's trying to really find out what Orwell's experience was like and she's like what kind of fish are in this river and the guy the river boat guy's like fish and she's like yeah but what what kind of fish what kind of fish would be caught here and he's like fish fish and I really feel like that was my entire experience with this novel just a big fat Duh. Oh, this next set of books brings me so much pain. I am getting rid of my beloved original editions of the Witches series by Terry Pratchett. This is part of his Discworld series. I reread all of the Witches cycle at the end of last year. I absolutely loved it. I just love it so much. However, turns out I'm old now and these mass market paperbacks have tiny tiny fonts and I can no longer really read the tiny tiny font comfortably so <laughs> I'm gonna seal this bag right now so that I don't change my mind. Okay the next one that I'm getting rid of is Dear Amy by Helen Callahan. I was bored. It's like so many other kidnap missing children missing person thrillers it's just, you don't give me anything to make me invest in the people who are searching or the people who are lost and so I don't care if you find them. You're gonna keep on with the missing people, at least make me care that they're missing. Oh, next I've got Fried Green Tomatoes at the Whistle Stop Cafe by Fanny Flagg. I really love this. I have loved this movie for a long time, although I can't watch it very often. I watch it maybe once every five years because it really... <laughs> it hurts me on so so many levels. The book is very unlike the movie. The book follows so many different characters throughout this experience so don't think you're gonna get the same thing but I just I don't think I'm ever gonna read it again. It was a lovely experience but I don't I don't want to just hoard books on my shelves for nostalgia purposes. That's also why I'm getting rid of this little pamphlet of Proof Rock and Other Observations by T.S. Eliot. I'm also getting rid of An American Marriage by Tayari Jones. You know guys, I think I'm done. I think I'm done with literary fiction about relationships and marriages that are solely about relationships and marriages because the entire time I was reading this I was just like, why are Celestial and Roy even together? How did they come to this point? Why do I care? What kind of a name is Celestial? And how does a Celestial end up with a Roy? Next I'm getting rid of Notes on a Scandal by Zoe Heller. This is a really really good book and has a really really wonderful twist but I've read it so many times that I just don't think I'm going to go back to it anymore because I could easily play a part in it. Commonwealth by Anne Patchett. I was really excited for this one and hopefully the person who finds this in the charity store will be very very happy because it is signed. I 
love Ann Patchett's writing but this one just didn't grab me. It is meant to be a story within a story and I just found it overly constructed. I could see all of the strings that were holding things together. Next I'm getting rid of A Girl as a Half Form Thing by Amor McBride. This is a coming of age story written in stream of consciousness with very little punctuation. I'm also getting rid of The Figure in the Carpet by Henry James because I'm just gonna say it guys, these little back classics are kind of pointless. I just, I, I didn't, I didn't, I wasn't swept along with this one the way that some people were. I hate dream narratives which probably didn't help so yeah. Mm. Next I'm getting rid of The Namesake by Jhumpa Lahiri. I love this book, I love the movie adaptation of this book but again it's another one I've read quite a few times. I read it at a very specific time in my life when I was getting into literary fiction and I just I don't think I'm going to revisit it so I hope that whoever picks this one up, this beautiful condition copy that I have here pre me bending any spines and stuff will enjoy this one. I'm getting rid of Jamaica Inn by Daphne du Maurier. I know that this is not a lot of people's favourite Daphne du Maurier but I really like it. It's just that I happen to have an audiobook version that I really really enjoy and I don't think that I'm ever going to read the paperback version of it again. Plus I really hate these covers. These covers are hideous, hideous darling. I am also getting rid of Through Black Spruce by Joseph Boyden because I don't care. I know I should care. Loads of people that I really trust their opinions have loved this book. It's really really long, the writing is not particularly grabbing me and I just, I don't care. We are really getting through these. I've got a hole here. I still might. I still might have to make this a two-parter. I'm going to try not to. I'm Next I am getting rid of the two Veronica Mars follow-on adaptation novels by Rob Thomas and I can't ever remember her name, Jennifer Graham. Um, they were bad. We all want more Veronica Mars. We all agree that it ended too soon and badly and just going to wait for the reboot. <laughs> These can go. Next I'm getting rid of The Mountain by Luca D'Andrea. It is very, very misogynistic. It is, oh dear. There are so many descriptions of women's skin and their legs and sitting on some protagonist's laps and just, it's really distasteful. Okay, next I am getting rid of this incomplete collection of the Anne of Green Gables books and their follow-ons. These are American editions but Aladdin have just made these so nice, they're so beautiful but they're an incomplete set. So I've reread them and now I'm getting rid of them because they're taking up room on my shelves and every time I look at them I get really annoyed at the fact that they have published, I think there's eight of these and they've published six of them and not in order and I just not amused. Next I am getting rid of The Song of Achilles by Madeline Miller. Look you guys it's me it's not this book. I know that this book is fairly universally loved but I just can't get into it. I do however have it on audiobook so I may try again and again and again but I've had this since it came out in paperback and I just don't I don't think I'm ever gonna achieve it this can go. Oh, more copies of Terry Pratchett. This is my original copy of Hogfather. It's going to go to somebody who will love it as much as me, I am sure. Let's move on to something that isn't hard. Getting rid of Waiting for Godot by Samuel Beth. I actually really, really love this play, especially seeing Ian McKellen and Patrick Stewart together performing this play, but you know, I can find this playtext anywhere and I, I, I don't need it on my shelf. Next, I have got a very recent read and that is Jane by Maggie Nelson. It was just okay. I was expecting it to blow me out of the water. There were some poems in here which I felt really like caught my breath and took my breath away and the circumstances of Jane's murder are horrible. But I do also own The Red Parts by Maggie Nelson which is a non-fiction memoir where years and years later her family were told that the man was found and convicted so I'm gonna read that one uh, but this one can go which is a bit annoying because it was really difficult to track down a new copy of it but you know whatever. We cut our losses. Oh next I'm getting rid of The Uncle's Story by Witty Ihimera and I know that I have 
uh, mispronounced that. I'm sure I have. Um, this one, oh, I'm, I'm a bit struggle bus with this one in terms of getting rid of it because it is a story that I think I would really, really enjoy. I just, oh, I've fallen so out of love with literary fiction recently and I don't know if I'm ever going to pick it up. You know what, if I ever want to read it I can buy it again. Once Upon a Time by Maria Warner. I went to see her at an event with another author that I really really love and I was totally transfixed by her point of view and how oh, so smart she is and I picked up this one and I just I shouldn't have. It was one of those, I loved her so much, I was so interested, but I hate fairy tales, I am not interested in fairy tale retelling, so this is going. Next I have got Not My Father's Son by Alan Cumming. I love this book. It is a very, very sharp memoir. The only reason that I'm getting rid of this and the follow up to it is that I have them both on audiobook. Next I am getting rid of Snowblind by Ragnar Jonasson. Least said, soonest mended. Oh look, here are two more of the out of order Anne of Green Gables books. Oh, and now I have Me Talk Pretty One Day by David Sedaris. I picked this up along with a whole host of other memoirs when I was really getting into memoirs when I discovered Joan Didion. And turns out I really hate David Sedaris. I can't stand his writing voice. Oh, next I have Cherry Healy's Letters to My Fanny. This is not a bad book. It's just not a groundbreaking book and it's definitely not a book that I felt like I needed in my journey with feminism and self-discovery. It's good if you're starting out with those kind of books, but I am not, and yeah. Next I have Jane Austen Cover to Cover by Margaret C. Sullivan. This was meant to be a look at all of Jane Austen's covers and how they were put together and why certain covers were chosen and why certain times have promoted different types of covers, and it wasn't. It's a picture book full of covers for the same six books with no real valuable commentary as far as I'm concerned. Oh and next I have the first two MC Beaton books in the Agatha Raisin series. I know that a lot of you guys have said that this is a series that you have read and enjoyed and as a cosy mystery series it does what it says on the tin but I have heard a few things about what she does to her characters that I don't particularly support and I don't really want to get into a 21 odd book series and then discover that she has either ruined slash gone a route that I don't want to go down. I'm already invested in some very very long cosy mystery series like the Stephanie Plum series, like Elizabeth Peters, Amelia Peabody series etc and so forth. I don't need another one. Next I have Everyday Sexism by Laura Bates. Again this is a very good book. It was riveting and the facts and the statistics and it really blew my mind but again if you've done any work or research deeper into feminism then this one is not really for you it's very much a starter book next i'm getting rid of the art of being normal by lisa williamson there's nothing particularly wrong with this book i just won't reread it it was all right but Next I'm getting rid of The Controller by Linda Coles. This is a very tiny self-published book that I received for review and I just I didn't get along with it and I didn't like it so I'm not going to review it or finish it. Next I have The Mars Room by Rachel Kushner. Again this is another one oh, that is a literary fiction thriller and because of that I am not in love with it. It's really start stoppy. Um, every time I think I'm getting a handle on the character she tells me something different which seems to contradict her previous opinions of her and herself. It's very bitty, it's very self-indulgent, it's just not the kind of book that I want to read anymore. Next I'm getting rid, very sadly, of Lock in the Shadows by Lynn Flewelling. I have tried to start this book no fewer than five times and none of those times have been successful. I'm finding the plot incredibly slow the writing very ploddy and the characters not that compelling which is really sad because it is a gay romance in a fantasy setting and I guess it's just going to be one of those like if you want to read that book and it doesn't exist write it yourself things for me. I, I just I wanted to love this so badly but I don't. Next I'm getting rid of Bad Feminist by Roxanne Gay. It's great but I've read it again. I'd, I'm not going to get anything new out of it. Hopefully somebody else will. Oh. And I'm getting rid of Man Up by Jack Irwin. This was not the book about toxic masculinity that I was hoping to get. It's piecemeal, it's bitty, 
Um, it's it's nothing that a logical person interested in gender politics will not have already have thought of. It's a no from me. The next that I have is on the prowl. I have very recently, as in in the last year, picked up this one, which is all of the Mercy Thompson stories that have been and the Alpha and Omega ones that have been published in little bind ups like this, all in one and it is very very beautiful and I'm going to love it and I don't need to keep this, this, this. I'm also getting rid of Eileen by Otesha Mosfeg. Look, I've said it a lot in this part, I have chucked out a lot of literary fiction. This is a literary fiction thriller which relies on being really sensational and really gross and really provoking to get its twists past the reader and I don't like it. I feel again like I'm being manipulated when I'm reading it. I can understand why some people have enjoyed it but it's not my thing. Next I have The Bricks That Built The Houses by Kate Tempest. I feel like her writing translates better to poetry than it does to novel form. I didn't enjoy this one. I felt like it was trying to be a bit too flowery, a bit too much like poetry and I was getting not enough of the characters. Everything was very sort of woolly and fluffy and out there and figurative and I just it just I wasn't interested. Next I have got Play As It Lays by Joan Didion. I have come to realise that I love Joan Didion's essay styles much like Kate Tempest. I love her original form. I'm not so much into her novels. I felt like this one was really insipid and I really hated all of the characters but not in a sort of Donna Tartway where I hated everybody in the secret history but I really loved them at the same time and I wanted to know more about them. This one was just like I, I hated you and I don't know why I'm reading about you. Which brings me to The Casual Vacancy by J.K. Rowling. Look a completest part of me wants to keep all of my J.K. Rowling on my shelves but I hated this book. I hated the conclusion of it especially. Some of the characters that I fell in love with in it just never went any of the places that I hoped that they were going to go. I felt like I was shortchanged in this one at every turn. I'm running out of spaces to put the books that I'm throwing you guys. The next one that I'm getting rid of is Everything Here is Beautiful by Mira T. Lee. So again, I think this is just a casualty of me breaking up long term with literary fiction. Oh a surprise one! I'm getting rid of George Orwell seeing things as they are, selected journalism and other writing, having to look up so many political references and things like that when I was reading it that are very specific to the time, not sort of generalised things about wars and stuff like that but people, very specific people and I just I wasn't getting much out of it and also the font is teeny tiny and there is so much in here. I was only interested in half of the articles that I was reading uh, I just feel like some journalism belongs in the time that it was written and some of it really translates. Next I'm getting rid of Headscarfs and Hymens Why the Middle East Needs a Sexual Revolution by Mona uh, Eltahawi. Oh I struggle with that name so bad. I really like this. I think it's a great book. It's a definite eye opener if you are not um, very far forward in your intersectional feminism and you want to know more about what it's like for women who have experiences in other places this is definitely one for you however uh, now I've read it I'm probably never going to go back to it so I'm hoping that this finds its way into the hands of somebody who really needs it. I'm getting rid of Pages for You by Sylvia Brownrigg. This is existentialist wank guys. This was self-indulgent whiny people of privilege falling in love with each other and finding their lesbian dream and I didn't care. Speaking of unpopular opinions I am getting rid of all of my Game of Thrones books. It's not because I don't like them. Do I think that Game of Thrones is the best fantasy series in the entire world? No. Do I enjoy them? Yes. Do I think they do controversial things? Yes. Do I think that there is a lot of controversy over George R. R. Martin and the multitude of books that he's bringing out which aren't the new books in this series? Yes. Do I think that's any of our business? About what he does with his time as a human on this earth? No. However, I have all of these on audiobook and so if I want to re-listen to them I will re-listen to the audiobooks. Okay in here somewhere is 6-4 by Hideo Yokoyama but I don't know where it's gone. Um, I tried to read 6-4. I struggled with the characters and differentiating them. He has a very sort of 
oh, this is this and that is this and this person said this and this person said that style of writing and I don't get on with it very well. I really loved the story. I was really interesting to interested to see where it was going but I couldn't get along with it and I sampled the start of this and I feel the same about it so I think I'm breaking up with Hideo Yokoyama. Oh so I'm getting rid of An English Room by Derry Moore. It's massive. I'm never going to read it again. I'm probably never going to look through it again and it's on my shelves. Oh next I'm getting rid of the complete poems of Thomas Hardy and I just it's never it's never going to be a project that I complete so it's sad that that one is going. Oh next I've got a few books of Helen. So Helen really loves the Percy Jackson series by Rick Riordan and the Heroes of Olympus which are the follow up and several 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 years ago I got her some short story collections about Percy Jackson etc and they are going now. Oh so I got rid of Lord of the Rings. I'm gonna get rid of The Hobbit. The thing is I don't feel about The Hobbit the way I do about Lord of the Rings. I actually really love The Hobbit. It's um I think the first fantasy book I ever read. I'm never gonna read it again. I'm never gonna read any Tolkien again. It's just it's not gonna happen. Oh sad. So I'm getting rid of Rainbirds by Clarissa Gungowen. Um, I like the premise of this story and I like the writing but I don't think the writing and the premise necessarily went together to create an anything. Um, I, I think her writing style is much more suited to literary fiction than it is to mystery or thriller and this is trying to be mystery and thriller. Oh next another painful one. So when I was in school I because I had agoraphobia I was out in, in school quite a lot and when I finally came back I really struggled uh, with commitments and because I'd never had to do that before in high school with deadlines and things like that and because I had anxiety etc it was really difficult for me and my English teacher Mr Fair who I loved so much he gave me a set of T.S. Eliot books and this was one of them. Again I'm trying to remember that memories are memories they're not in the objects that I own. Oh so next I have Silence is Goldfish by Annabelle Pitcher. I keep wanting to say pincher. Um, I read My Sister Lives on the Mantelpiece a few years ago and it ripped the heart out of me. It just ripped it out of my chest. I was a sobbing mess. I was literally reading the last pages going and then this happened because I was reading it aloud to Helen. It was really bad. It was really, really, really bad. And I requested this one when it came out because I thought I really want to read more of her books if they emotionally affect me like that. And then I decided I don't want to read more of her books if they all emotionally affect me like that. So this one, this beautiful copy, can go for somebody else to be emotionally stunted by. Next I have got Missing Presumed by Susie Steiner. I really like the first couple of pages of this. I think the writing style definitely has a lot of potential but for me it was a big miss. I just wasn't I wasn't interested enough to keep reading. Oh next I have a bunch of Ira Levin that I didn't enjoy. Um, so I've got uh, Sliver, A Kiss Before Dying, The Perfect Day and The Boys From Brazil. I am just not interested in dystopias anymore. They are not for me. I just they're not for me. Here are some more books that make me incredibly sad. I'm getting rid of the first four books in the Chu graphic novel series. I actually love this graphic novel series but I have made a decision that I'm not going to buy graphic novels anymore. They are too expensive for too little payback for me. I know that's probably also a controversial opinion but one of these alone I had a look on my Amazon cost $9.99 which is like a tenner which is for me two or three paperbacks that will last me for hours and hours and hours. It's not that I don't love them, I do and I have a whole host of graphic novel series either finished or really long ones that are continuing on my shelves but I just, I, I don't, I can't justify spending the money on the rest of this series. Now I am also getting rid of a couple of Stephen King's it is so boring! Salem's Lot is so boring, so boring, so boring. I have it. I've read it. I really really enjoyed the experience of reading it. I really honestly did. There are so many things wrong with this novel. There are so many misogynistic things. So many like anti-feminist statements. Nevertheless I really enjoyed it. It was way too long. It needed about 300 pages cut off. If I ever read it again I'll read it on Kindle. I'm getting rid of three short story collections that are all murdery and stabby set around Christmas. There's nothing wrong with them except for this one. I don't like PG James's writing and this was uh, another instance of somebody got me it as a gift. It was lovely. 
I don't like P.D. James's writing. But I've discovered that I don't like to read about Christmas. I like to experience Christmas and I like to be in Christmas, but I don't like to read about it. I don't, I feel like it's like over festivising the season. I don't know. So these two, Murder on Christmas Eve and Murder Under the Christmas Tree are going. Oh, another Terry Pratchett. Nearly finished guys, we're nearly finished, which is a good thing because my legs are now completely numb. Um, I am getting rid of Force of Nature by Jane Harper again. Don't throw stones at the screen. Speaking of big hardbacks and one that can't go in any of these rippable trash bags, I am getting rid of my entire works of Shakespeare. I got this for uni. It is tiny thin Bible paper. It's thousands and thousands of pages. It takes up more than my headspace on my shelf. Next, I am getting rid of Blackwater Lilies by Michael Bousset. Michael Bousset? Michael Bousset, I think. This one's a weird one for me because I really enjoy this book. I got halfway through and could not pick it back up. I physically couldn't make myself pick it back up. I don't know why. Uh, we Are Made of Molecules by uh, Susan Nielsen is boring. The characters are crap. Yes Please by Amy Fowler was great. I really enjoy it. And I think somebody else could get some wicked fun out of this one. I'm getting rid of George Orwell English Rebel by Robert Collis. This is another really, 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 really intensely dry biography that just focuses on dates and facts far more than it focuses on Orwell as a person and I don't get, I don't get it, I don't want to read that crap, I don't want to read that. How can you make writing about George Orwell boring? I mean, he was George Orwell. Next I have Fierce Kingdom by Jen Phillips. I really enjoyed this. I know a lot of people were like, it was too short and she makes too many nonsensical decisions in it. This is about a woman and her very young son who have gone to the zoo at the end of their day and they're frequent customers at the zoo so they're having a wander around their favourite places and as they're about to walk out because everything is closing they discover some dead bodies on the ground and hear some gunshots and they have to hide in amongst all of the animals and the exhibits and things and it is terrifying and sweaty making but uh, I'm never going to read it again. Next I'm getting rid of The Sheltering Sky by Paul Bowles. I have never ever ever had any interest in reading this. So I am getting rid of I See You and Let Me Lie by Claire McIntosh. I read is it I Let You Go by Claire McIntosh and I was really 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 unimpressed with it like super unimpressed with it and this is another thing that I'm resolving never to do again. If an author has a huge backlist and I have one of her books or his books on my shelves I am going to try that book first before I buy others because this is a waste of money for me guys. I'm not even going to try these because I was so unimpressed with I Let You Go. Oh another book of selected poems by Seamus Heaney. Um, it was fine. It wasn't anything spectacular. Spectacular but I bought it for uni. I've been holding on to it because of uni nostalgia and I just don't need it. And finally the final book in my unhaul corner is History Is All You Left Me by Adam Silvera. What is with the drowning trend right now in YA, you guys? Why does everybody drown? Why does every male gay romance have to have some sort of tragic incident to get it on track? So that is it! That is everything! I am surrounded by black bags. I don't imagine that my second and third unhaul of the year are going to have anywhere near this amount of books because I have given a really good clean out on my shelves, like a really good clean out. So for our next video we will be back off the floor out of this weird and not very well lit and dodgy filming location and my legs won't be numb anymore and I won't be surrounded by all these books that I want to get out of my house and things will be hopefully somewhat back to normal. And until next time when I hopefully will be back with my actual goals and resolutions video, I will speak to you later. Bye! I'm going to have to carry all these in here. <laughs> Whose idea was this?